Hi, this is a lesson today on dividing a decimal number by a whole number. It goes with GoMath lesson 5.4 and we have a learning intention which is that you can divide a decimal number by a whole number and you're going to be using this today, the traditional algorithm. Uh, and that's kind of the old-fashioned way that uh, I learned when I was a student and your parents probably learned that too. Now there's a wide variety of ways to divide but uh, this lesson is going to focus on the traditional algorithm. And our success criteria is can you use that traditional algorithm? One, can you place the decimal in the quotient? And really this right here is the lesson, like that's the whole thing. Can you do that? And you're going to see that it's pretty simple. Uh, it's simple if you're organized, that is. Um, and can you do similar problems with a 90% accuracy rate? If you can, you'll, you'll be successful. Uh, the skills you need are the division algorithm. If you don't have that old, tried, and tested true division algorithm, please review it before you continue with this lesson. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about the dividend and the divisor and the quotient, and um, you should know what I'm talking about. All right, here's our notes for lesson 5.4, and it's just one question. Where do I place the decimal in the quotient? And really, it just gets placed directly above. If you're using graph paper and you're organized, this lesson is a breeze. All right, here we have a couple of example problems, and I'm going to set the first one up, 12.8 divided by 8. All right, a lot of people, you know, they see the 12.8 first, and they put it on the outside of this box doesn't go on the outside. Whatever is dividing goes on the inside. All right, so uh, the one thing that I uh, tell students all the time is that uh, you should get yourself a card. All right, I'm going to make a card here. And um, the card can help you in your division focus on what you're dividing. So if we take the card and we cover up everything but the first digit, we say, well, I got one thing. How many times can I subtract 8 from that? Well, I can take it away zero times. Move the card over, and now I have 12 things. Uh, 8 times 1 is 12. Uh, not 12, 1 times 1 is 8. So I had 12 things. I used one group of 8, which meant uh, I had used 8 things. How many do I have left over? That's why we subtract. Uh, 12 minus 8 is 4. Reveal the next digit. That's four ones. I'm going to be grouping that up with the eight tenths. Uh, and then I have 48 things. How many groups of eight can I subtract from 48? I can subtract six groups of eight, which is all I had. I had 48. I used 48. I have zero left. All right, so that's the traditional algorithm. But really, what do you do with the decimal? Well, here's the decimal place right there. Yeah. The only thing you do with the decimal is that you continue to separate the ones and the tenths with a decimal, and it just pops straight up above, and that's, that's it. All right, so 12.8 uh, divided by 8 is 1.6. Moving on, I have 50.9, or 59, excuse me, 0.8, not 50.9. I don't know what I was looking at. Uh, and I'm going to be dividing that by 13. Now, 13 isn't one of those numbers where, uh, you know, it's on the multiplication chart, so you automatically, automatically know how to multiply by 13s. So we may have to be doing a little bit of work uh, and multiplying off to the side here. All right, my card is um, going to be needed again, but I'm just going to make a new one. And cover up everything but the first digit, so I have five things, and I have 13 groups. How many times can I subtract 13 from 5? Well, I can subtract zero groups of 13 from 5. Uh, and if when I put a zero up there, I reveal the next number or the next digit. Now I have 59 things. How many times can I subtract 13? Well, I might have to do a little bit of work off to the side. I'm just going to choose four and see if that's uh, close to 59, uh, and it turns out it is very close to 59. All right, so 13 times 4 is 52. So I can subtract 13 four times from 59. So 4 times 13 is 52. 
four groups of 13. Uh, and then I subtract, right? Because I had 59 things and I used 52 in my subtraction. So how many things do I have left over? Seven. All right, and then I use my card and reveal the next digit and bring that down and regroup it. So now I have uh, 78 of these things called tenths. And off to the side, again, I'm going to be um, multiplying. And so, let's see, 13 times 4 was 52. I'm going to try a little bit higher than 4. I'm going to try 6 and see if that gets me to 78. 6 times 3 is 18. And in fact, it gets me right on 78. All right, so uh, I've multiplied by 6. I put the 6 up there. 6 times 13 is 78. I had 78 things. I used all of those 78 things, and I have 0 left over. And the last thing for me to do, in fact, you don't have to wait till the last thing, is to take that decimal and place it in the quotient. Now, some people, right when they start, they just write the decimal in the uh, dividend here, and then they just place it up in the quotient, and then they just you know, divide as if the decimal wasn't there. They already put it where it belongs. That's a good way of doing it too. Now, what do you do when you finish with the problem? Here's what you do. You check and verify your answer, of course. So hopefully you got, uh, your problems look like my problems and 12.8 uh, divided by eight, this is actually the problem from, you know, the last page. Uh, well, we can verify those answers by multiplying, right? So one of the things that uh, students do all the time is they, you know, they get the answers so far wrong and they don't really realize why they're so wrong. Well, one of the reasons is that they, they don't verify their answers. So we're going to verify now that you know how to multiply by a decimal, it's time to use that knowledge to verify our division problems. So I take 1.6, I'm going to multiply it by 8. And why do I do that? It's because the um, numbers that are outside of the box when multiplied together should equal the number on the inside of the box. If they don't, something's wrong. And I know some of you are already saying, well, you also have to add in the, uh, the you know, remainder. Uh, but if there's no remainder, it's just multiplying, right? 8 times 1.6 should equal 12.8. If it does not, something went wrong. And then you can fix it. But I don't want to fix it. Just fix it. You'll feel better. Just trust me on that one. All right, so 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 1 is 8 plus the 4 is 12, 128. But again, it's about counting your decimal places, right? So I have one decimal place here, and so in my answer, I will have one decimal place. I take my pencil, move over that decimal place, and put the decimal in the answer. So uh, look, I verified it, and then I can put a little check mark by it. It's right. Yay. All right, here's, here's the common mistake. Uh, they'll be dividing, and I'll just do the 12.8. Uh, divided by 8 again, and they get uh, 1, 6, but they don't put the decimal up there, and they're like, yeah, that's 16. And I always ask them, all right, you started with 12.8. You divided it up into smaller pieces. How is your answer more than 12.8? You know, that, that should be, you know, ringing bells in your head. Uh, just thinking about it. So the decimal has to go up into the quotient. And that's really a common mistake, but you should not be making that common mistake. If you just think about it a little bit, you'll avoid it. Our task today is lesson 5.4, do 10 problems, do them 90% accuracy, and you are checked off. Good luck, everybody.